Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we're going to talk about creating effective resumes for UX designers and UI designers. So if you're new to this channel, I highly recommend you subscribe as I share such helpful videos from time to time. And uh, if you like this video, then please give a like and it motivates me to share more such content so that it helps the community. So we're going to talk about uh, how to structure and lay out your resume. We'll also talk about the overall design of your resume. Then we'll talk about the content and organizing your resume and the content in there. And then finally, I'll also share some mistakes that you should absolutely avoid. So stay along in the end and uh, let's get started. So if you are applying for a senior position like a senior UX designer or a lead UX designer, then it's uh, implied that your prior experience is going to speak for your potential. So uh, include your prior experience and the details on the top, then followed by your education and uh, your skills. Although the highlight here is not going to be on your education. So one line should be enough for that. If you are a fresher or applying uh, for an internship, then it's understood that uh, you may not have enough experience on your hand. So you want to highlight your projects that you may have worked on while in design school or a boot camp. Then you can follow it by your education and include uh, certain information about how it helped getting to uh, this place and then mention your skills and your link to your portfolios. Most likely when you apply for a position, uh, the resume is going to be uh, sorted out by uh, an automatic tracking system. So it extracts the information from your resume. So avoid using um, like, you know, just flashy stuff and then use simple and proven layouts to maximize your chances of getting an interview. So let's look at an example. So in this example, the user or the applicant has actually clearly used two column layouts. So it's clearly distinguishable and it's uh, it looks neat. And then they have also mentioned the headers for uh, the sections, for example, experience, education, skills, awards, etc. Right. And they have also mentioned the dates and the timelines of the previous jobs that they have worked on. So it gives the hiring manager a quick glance about the entire experience and the timeline and if they have any gaps in their experience and it's easy to look at. Looking at another example, uh, this person or this applicant has also made use of two columns, although uh, there's a lot of white space. Uh, so it implies that they don't have enough experience or enough education or just enough content to put uh, on the on the resume. But the, the, the good thing here is that they've actually added some headers and they've also added the dates and the timelines, which are clear and easy to read. Now, they've also added the useful links, for example, like I'm guessing that these are the, the websites for the products that they were building or uh, the websites, the companies that they were working for. Now, I would not overdo it by adding like so many links. Um, so add like relevant links so that it adds to your experience and the hiring manager, like if they want more information, they can find it in that link. Now let's talk about the overall design of your resume. So the first thing I want to stress here is that the time spent on your portfolio and building your portfolio should be much more than the time you spend on building or designing your resume, right? So the resume is not your brand. It's actually uh, just about your skills and your experience. Your portfolio is your brand. So I would highly recommend like if you are putting so much time in a resume to stop right now instead use that time and build a proper a proper portfolio i've just shared a video um, on my youtube channel of how to uh, create a good portfolio i'm sure it'll be helpful the next point is avoid using any visual distractions on your resume for example like adding background colors uh, or gradients um, some icons, uh, even progress bars on your skills, because there is no set limit 
uh, to to your skills, right? Now you cannot say you know 100% of team building. Like what's the 100%? What's the ceiling? So there is no ceiling, and hence it doesn't make sense to add any progress bars. Let's look at an example here. So this resume I've just added. Like I don't want to throw any shade at the at the applicant, but this kind of resume is a big no-no. So as someone who has reviewed a lot of resumes and taken some UX design interviews, I would say this, uh, I would just reject this at the very first glance. So first of all, they've added like background colors and some different like shapes here. So that's a big no. The other thing is adding visual elements and icons and like hashtags. Uh, it's not required and adding progress bars. I just mentioned like it doesn't make any sense. You have the skills to use MS Office. It makes sense. So yeah, just mention that you know MS Office. Uh, adding these progress bars does not make any sense at all. Looking at another example, here is another applicant who made use of the two column layout, but then they added their profile photo, which is not required. They added their information or uh, like an overview, which is okay, but just make sure that you don't take up space for your overview where like, you know, it, it could have been used by something else. Just taking a first glance, it, it uh, I understand uh, very easily that they are a fresher or they are applying for a fresher level, like, you know, entry level UX design job. So uh, I understand that they may not have enough experience. So I would recommend that you include any projects that you did, um, any in uh, internships that you worked on. And if you have any recommendations, then add those recommendations in your resume. Because if you are an entry level designer, I, as a, uh, as a hiring manager, I'm taking a huge risk uh, of interviewing you and hiring you. So uh, adding your recommendations uh, from like, you know, your prior uh, teammates or your prior supervisors or your prior professors would be a huge help in actually sorting you out above the others. Now let's talk about how to organize your content and uh, on like, you know, different sections. So for every job, for every internship, for every experience, uh, I would recommend adding three to four bullet points explaining how you added value to that job or to that experience. Now, you may also want to highlight any key achievements or milestones. And if you have those metrics, definitely include those. One example of uh, metrics is that before using or before your product, that particular workflow or that particular task took 30 minutes to complete. But now, since you shipped your product uh, that you designed, the users are able to finish that exact task within five minutes. So there you have it. It's a huge reduction in the time required to, con uh, to perform a particular task. That, that's your metric. Now, that this is just one example. Now, you may want to think about the metrics for your experiences and for your uh, prior um, uh, jobs and definitely include those. Avoid uh, like, you know, adding any company description or the project description of like what the project was or what the company does, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary for the job that you're applying. You may also want to add any project like, you know, product links that you may have shipped earlier. So if you've built a product and shipped it to real users, uh, you can add just one link there. So the hiring manager can go look at the link and understand more if they want to. In the description, Avoid uh, expected job duties. Like if for a particular job you are required to do a certain task, then avoid using including that in your resume. Uh, everybody, like especially the hiring manager, knows what you are expected to do or what you were responsible for. So it doesn't make any sense. Instead, use that space to add any uh, achievements and milestones. So for example, like if you are applying for a UX design job, then one of your expected duties is to uh, come up with creative solutions and wireframes and mockups. So it's uh, absolutely not necessary to add those in your description. Let's look at some examples here. So again, going back to that example, they've added external links, but again, as I mentioned earlier, they, I wouldn't use 
uh, include so many links just one is enough they've also added any metrics here so for example for this job they were chosen uh, as one of the 14 design fellows out of 2500 applicants um, this uh, tells me that they are a fresher so I would include any metrics uh, as I mentioned earlier like if you are designing a product that reduces uh, the time required to perform an action that's a metric or if by using your product or your feature the customer base grew from 500 to 1000 that's a 100% increase in your acquired customers so definitely add those metrics if you have them but do not lie do not lie anywhere on your like on your resume just like that's a that's a given right now I also suggest adding bullet points in your descriptions for uh, a particular job or a project where like you know, for a hiring manager like viewing um, the resume and understanding the bullet points is way easier than reading a big paragraph because the hiring manager actually would be uh, looking at so many resumes within a given uh, time so they don't have much time to look at it let's talk about the mistakes to avoid the first one is as i mentioned earlier avoid using unnecessary visual distractions it's a big no-no uh, the hiring manager uh, most likely will just move on to the next applicant right the resume is not a place to do so use that time to build a proper portfolio use simple and proven layouts to maximize your chances of an interview because as i mentioned earlier most likely your resume will be uh, the content from your resume will be extracted by an automatic tracking system so using uh, proven layouts that work for those systems actually is, works in your favor right so it makes sense to use them and not be creative here be creative in your portfolio cannot stress this enough the next point is tailor your prior experience and job titles to the job that you're applying right for example if you are applying for a senior ux designer position but in your in the past you also done like you also worked in a job where you had to do ux design and also coding so it doesn't make sense to add coding experience here because you're applying for a senior ux design position right so tailor that description tailor the job titles as well to the job that you are applying creating a resume in a content editing application for example like microsoft word or google docs is act like it's it's much better uh, than creating it in a raster editing or a vector editing application like photoshop or figma or adobe xd believe me if uh, you create uh, it in ms word or just like content editing application it's much faster to do that and also you can uh, stick to those basic layouts the proven layouts that i just mentioned earlier now the last thing i want to mention and this is like if anything else this should be your key takeaway from this video that proofread your resume uh, ask help from your friends or your uh, classmates if required uh, proofread it three times four times five times um, it's it's so embarrassing to see that like you made silly grammatical errors in your resume as a hiring manager uh, i wouldn't i would expect this to be the very least uh, from an applicant right so it's it's only fair that you proofread your resume and the content many many times over so that you don't have any mistakes there before leaving i would also like to share like a good example of what's a good resume so this resume that you see here it's actually uh, a very good example of what a resume should be like although they're not using two columns but that's okay because they have so much experience their experience speaks for itself so they've added the timelines to those previous experiences they've added short descriptions although i would add like bullet points two to three bullet points um they've added the education uh before like after that and then their skills after that because if you have so much experience then your experience speaks for itself so your education and your skills kind of take a back seat right so this is a very good example of a good resume and then uh, they actually have much more like higher chances of getting or making it to the interview with that uh, that's the end of this video i hope it was helpful 
please leave a like if you liked it and uh, it only motivates me to share more such videos for you uh, subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to uh, see more such videos share this video with your friends with your uh, classmates who are building their resumes and applying for jobs like if you have any questions uh, put them down in the comments or if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me to discuss anything on your mind design related uh, i'm here to help you the link to that is also in the description uh, go ahead book a call i'll make sure i'm available to help you as well so if you want to need uh, if you need help uh, with like your resume or how to create your portfolio or if you need help in your design process or if you're stuck anywhere in the design process uh, need some critique or need some uh, feedback uh, feel free to book a call um, i cannot wait to talk to you thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one